Last night I came on the floor to talk about legislation we were debating in the Senate this week that has to do with human trafficking. Order in the chamber, please. Combating human trafficking, an issue that every senator in this chamber cares about. And I last night talked about some of the women and children who have been exploited online, their stories, some of the heartbreaking stories. This opportunity we have before us is to pass legislation that addresses that very directly. Because we are seeing in this country, in this century, unbelievably an increase in trafficking right now. And the experts all say it's for one primary reason, and that's because the trafficking has moved online. The ruthless efficiency of the internet, Mr. President, the dark side of the internet. You've been involved with this issue in our committee. As you know, we spent a couple of years coming to this point, an 18-month investigation of what's happening online, why it's happening, and then coming up with a legislative solution. The reports of human trafficking to one of the major anti-trafficking groups in the country called Polaris, through their hotline and through their text line, the reports have increased 842% over the past 10 years. Uh, this is consistent uh, across the board and talking to other experts. There's this increase, and when they look at it, again, what they see is where it's happening is online. So victims have told me, have told you, have told other members here, this has now moved from the street to the smartphone, from the street corner to the Internet. According to the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, nearly 75 percent of the child trafficking reports it receives from the public involve one single website, and that's Backpage. And that's why we spent a lot of time looking into Backpage, why this was happening, how we could address it. According to Shared Hope International, uh, another advocacy group, the number is even higher than 75 percent. So we did, through a process that many in this body were involved with, research this. Claire McCaskill is the ranking member of the, was the ranking member of the Permanent Subcommittee Investigations when we investigated that. I see she's on the floor now. She and I, along with our subcommittee, along with uh, you and other members of the full committee, Mr. President, looked into this issue. And what we found was even more shocking than we expected. We knew that people were being trafficked online by this website. We knew that they had to be complicit with some of this. What we didn't know is they were actually taking ads and altering the ads, editing the ads, to try to hide the fact that people were selling underage girls online. They, as they put it, were cleaning the ads for illegal transactions. And then, of course, covering up the evidence of these crimes in order to increase their profits. Last night, I talked about three brave mothers who shared the tragic stories of their daughters who were exploited and sold for sex on Backpage.com. Their daughters were between ages 14 and 16 when they were trafficked. Kabiki Pride was one of those women we talked about. She's also part of a documentary called I Am Jane Doe. It tells the stories of her family and other families. It's a powerful, powerful presentation, and it's a powerful way where you can feel their frustration, feel their pain. It's not easy to see, but it's important to see, and I recommend it. You can go on Netflix and find I Am Jane Doe. Unfortunately for those mothers and countless others, Backpage has gotten away with this. It's not because people haven't tried to sue them, prosecutors haven't tried to go after them, it's because the courts have consistently said that they are shielded from prosecution. They are shielded from these lawsuits. They're shielded by a federal law, one that we passed here in this chamber 21 years ago. It's called the Communications Decency Act. It was a well-intended law. Back in 1996, the focus was when the Internet was in, an infant, in its infancy, trying to assure there could be freedom of the Internet. Ironically, part of the original intention of the Communications Decency Act was to protect children from indecent material on the Internet by letting websites remove and block some of that explicit material. Now that same law is being used as a shield by online sex traffickers who promote and engage in this with immunity. This federal law is being used by websites to get away with something that would be illegal, would be criminal, if they were to do it on the street corner. Congress did not intend this broad immunity, but numerous courts across the country have made it clear their hands are tied because of the legal precedent that's been set by the way the courts have interpreted this law. As the lawmaking branch of the federal government, it's up to us to fix this injustice. No one else can do it. One court, one of the federal courts, actually said, this cannot be fixed by litigation. It has to be fixed by legislation. That's why America's district attorneys, 
50 of the state attorneys general in this country. Judges all over the country and many others have called on Congress to amend the Communications Decency Act and fix this injustice. In one of the most direct calls for congressional action yet, in August of last year, a Sacramento judge cited the broad immunity provided by the Communications Decency Act in dismissing pimping charges against Backpage.com. The court opinion stated, and I quote, if and until Congress sees fit to amend the immunity law, the broad reach of Section 230 of the Communications Decency Act even applies to those alleged to support the exploitation of others by human trafficking. This judge issued an invitation to Congress to act. Others have as well. Websites that knowingly sell vulnerable women and children for sex are profiting and getting away with sex trafficking because of a federal law. It's up to Congress to do the right thing, to fix this loophole. That's why my co-author Richard Blumenthal, who is on the floor here this evening, and I introduced the Stop Enabling Sex Traffickers Act, or SESTA, alongside a bipartisan group of four other original co-sponsors, Senator John McCain, Senator Claire McCaskill, Senator John Cornyn, Senator Heidi Heidkamp. Soon others joined us. In that first day, in fact, we had 24 co-sponsors, bipartisan. Soon we had a majority of Republicans and a majority of Democrats co-sponsoring this legislation. But I want to thank those five original co-sponsors because they helped us put together legislation that was targeted, focused, and actually fixes the problem. SESTA will provide justice for victims of online sex trafficking and hold accountable the websites that knowingly facilitate these crimes by making two, two very narrowly focused changes to federal law. First, it allows victims to get the justice they deserve by removing the Communications Decency Act's broad liability protections for a narrow set of bad actors, specifically websites that knowingly facilitate sex trafficking crimes. Second, it will allow state prosecutors, state attorneys general, to prosecute these websites that violate federal trafficking laws. SESTA simply says if you're violating federal sex, traf sex trafficking laws and you're doing it knowingly, you're facilitating it, then you've got to be held to account. That's just common sense. This bill also includes legislation from the House side that creates new criminal penalties. It creates a new federal crime for websites that have the intent to promote or facilitate illegal prostitution. All of these changes will help to hold bad actors accountable while doing nothing to impair the free internet. In fact, SESTA will protect websites that do not actively and knowingly engage in online sex trafficking. We do that by preserving the Communications Decency Act's Good Samaritan provisions, which protects good actors who proactively block and screen for offensive material, thus shielding them from frivolous lawsuits. SESTA's fair, common sense approach is why this bill has an extraordinary coalition of support. National law enforcement organizations, including the Fraternal Order of Police, faith-based groups, the civil rights community, major businesses, even including a number of tech companies who support this legislation. But most importantly, anti-trafficking advocates and trafficking survivors are the ones who support SESTA. And they're the ones we listened to when we drafted this legislation. They're the folks back in Ohio back in Connecticut, back in our states, who came to us to talk to us about this issue. They're the ones we not just listened to, but we actually helped work with them to draft something that would work to close this loophole. This bill makes all the sense in the world, and it will do its part to help close this gap, to help deal with this amazing, in this century, in this country, ability for people to exploit someone online criminally and not be held liable. I want to thank Leader Mitch McConnell for his leadership, for his commitment to combating sex trafficking, and for putting this bill on the floor for a vote. I want to thank Senator John Thune, who chairs the Commerce Committee, Bill Nelson, his ranking member, who held a hearing on this bill and marked it up and addressed some of the concerns that had been expressed by the tech community. Here in the Senate, we now have over 60 co-sponsors. This has not been an issue of politics or partisanship. It's been an issue of the heart. It's about preventing exploitation. It's about providing justice. There are some in this chamber who will want to change this legislation over the next couple of days as we debate it. I have a great deal of respect for my colleague from Oregon, Senator Ron Wyden. I talked about him last night on the floor. I talked about the work he has done to combat human trafficking. I talked about the legislation that I did with him to provide better data for sex trafficking, which was his legislation. But he was also a leader in passing the Communications Decency Act that we are amending through this legislation. So I understand that he's passionate about that, that bill that passed 21 years ago. 
I will just say we took a very targeted approach here, which is why the Internet Association, representing much of the tech community, not all, but much of it, actually endorses our efforts. This is the Senate's immediate opportunity to help stop online sex trafficking while protecting a free and open Internet. It's the right balance. It's already passed the House of Representatives. The White House has shown a commitment to it and is willing to sign the legislation. Now it's the Senate's turn to act. So let me tell you where I stand. I stand with law enforcement officials all around the country and prosecutors all around the country who have asked us to pass this legislation to give them the tools they need to stop this exploitation. I stand with Kabiki Pride, who I talked about earlier, Nicole S., Yvonne Ambrose, and the other mothers across the country who've had their children exploited at the hands of online sex traffickers. I stand with the young women and the children I've met in Dayton and Columbus and Akron and Toledo and Cincinnati and Cleveland, all over Ohio, who are sex trafficking survivors, who are victims, who want justice. And I know that together we will all stand on the right side of history when the Stop Enabling Sex Traffickers Act is voted on and passes this chamber, and when it eventually becomes law to immediately help provide justice for these victims. Justice cannot be seen, but its absence is felt. And those who have been trafficked online only to see the websites who knowingly facilitated in this, then prosper and escape legal consequences, those are the ones who have experienced real injustice. They have felt that injustice. We can right this wrong. Let's pass the Stop Enabling Sex Traffickers Act to provide these victims the justice they deserve. Mr. President, I noticed, again, as I mentioned earlier, the co-author of this legislation, my colleague, is on the floor. Uh, he's a former federal prosecutor. He has dealt with these issues both as a prosecutor and as a legislator. We are the co-chairs and co-founders of this trafficking caucus we started six or seven years ago. I thank him for his work on this important legislation and like to yield my time to him.